Hey, it works. It does work. And uh, I, I do think, I do believe that we are live. So, hello everyone. Uh, it's afternoon here in, uh, it's actually sunny Florida. It's a little bit chilly. Can you believe it's, I'm going to say it's a little bit chilly. It's probably only about 70 or 72 degrees or something, which in my young days in England, if it got to, if the temperature reached 70, that we were having a heat wave. But it's cold for Florida. And please forgive me because I've got a little sniffle here. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I don't get sick. Uh, but anyway, so um, where are we? Yes, we are. Uh, this is a show about uh, hands around the world, healing, uh, healing hands around the world. And I always ask people, you know, if you want to join with me, if you want to help me to send healing, because we do send healing on a daily basis every day at 11 a.m., uh, wherever you are in the world. So even if it's not my 11 a.m., it's still working anyway, because the idea of sending healing around the world is just... Uh, is phenomenal and if we all join together and send healing around the world just think if everyone on this planet did that and spent one minute of every day it sets you up to be a nice person for the rest of the day it sets you up to be a loving and a caring person for the rest of the day wouldn't the world be a much much better place if everybody did this all right so uh my story this week uh concerns um, a, a gentleman that I actually met when I was in Hong Kong. I used to go to Hong Kong quite a bit and the first time I was there I think I stayed for three weeks and the last time I was there I think I stayed for something like four months. Uh, it's that kind of a place. It's a very exciting place. It's a busy place. It's a, a really sort of moving place. It's a very transient for a lot of people. Every nationality that you could possibly think of, I think, goes through Hong Kong at some point or another. When I first, <coughs> excuse me, when I first went to Hong Kong, um, I was invited to, to uh, go on a, a radio show and, and um, you know, no one knew who I was at the time. I didn't go there with any agenda <coughs> particularly. But I was invited onto a radio show that there was an English woman who found out that I was there and said, would you come on the show and talk about what you do, which I did. And part of the, the conversation was about healing and, uh, you know, how that and how that worked. And the next thing I know after the radio show I was inundated with phone calls and busy uh, for the entire three weeks that I was there, which is why the next time I went, I stayed longer and did more and uh it it was it was an, a very interesting a very interesting time in a very interesting place however now one of the people who heard me on the radio we're going to uh we're going to call him mike because uh because uh and um he was just lovely he called me one day and he told me could we you know he asked first of all could we meet and he explained that he had a serious issue with his lungs. He had tumours growing on his lungs. They were not necessarily cancerous, but of course, you know, they stopped him from breathing, so on and so forth. Uh, he was American uh, and he had, uh, you know, very sort of set ideas about health healing and and uh, you know going to the doctor and doing all of this stuff but he was getting pretty desperate because nobody could help him nobody could find a cure and so on and he wanted to then try uh, what was then known as the holistic way I, I think it still is I think some people do talk about the holistic way it covers a massive and major area uh, and uh, so we met I explained to him you know what I do how you know healing is uh, basically prayer uh, hands-on energy transferring of energy from the healer in this case myself uh, and I also explained to him look I'm I'm not saying that I can do anything about your lungs your lung disease um, what healing does first and foremost it gives healing to the to the soul to the spirit so that the you know the soul becomes healed it becomes well and then the 
the aura or the energy field that surrounds us all can become brighter, lighter, we get more peace, we find that we find more strength, uh, uh, often enabling us to deal with the illnesses that we have and to deal with the, you know, to find the strength to deal with the illnesses that we have. So we got to know each other really well over a period of, well, several, uh, two or three years probably. And every time I came to Hong Kong, we would meet. And of course, I would give him regular healing. And, uh, you know, we just, we, we got to know each other really well. Um, we had an amazing relationship once he took me to see uh, a very old Chinese guy who was, um, he was a herbalist or something, but he, he would look at you, he would look in your eyes, this old man, and he would tell you instantly the issues that he he thought you had so he was using his senses his sensitivity some people might have said he was psychic he never claimed to be any of that he just looked at the body looked at your eyes and seemed to know and seemed to be able to see into your soul that was a great experience so Mike and I would have some really great experiences now one day he called me and he wasn't feeling so great he said is it possible for you to you know to meet me and he told me where he was and I said sure uh, he was in a very very um, a particular area that that Westerners didn't usually go to we were in a very sort of a Chinese part of Hong Kong uh, and uh, he said can you know can you meet me there and I said yes yeah. so we're walking along the street and he said so where are we going to do this healing. Now, I just have to give you a little brief picture of Hong Kong during the day in the Chinese sections, well, even in, 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 everywhere in Hong Kong. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Traffic, 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 noise, noise, noise. Fabulous place, but extremely noisy and extremely busy. So we're walking along and he said, you know, should we go into a hotel, see if we can get a hotel room? Now, now, you, I know what you're thinking, but no, he was very happily married and I was not interested in a relationship. We were just wanting, he was just wanting to find a, just a really quiet place where we could sit and I could give him his healing. So I said, oh no, there's no need for that. And I spied across the street, uh, sort of like a, almost like a hole in the wall, like a, a small cafe. Uh, now, when we actually walked in there it 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 seemed small from the outside but it was actually quite long and there were lots of tables and so on lots of people in there too so i said to him you know let's do this well it was on a main road the whole front of the of the this cafe whatever it was was raised up open open to the street all you could hear was trucks going by, cars going by, you know, sort of a heavy, heavy traffic. And of course, in the cafe, all you could hear was noise, 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 people talking, chatting and so on and so forth. And he, he looked at me, he said, well, we, we can't, can't do it here, can we? We can't do healing here. And I said, of course we can. We can do it anywhere we like. So he said, but it's so noisy, Rosemary. Is it, I mean, how is it, how is it going to work? So I said, well, you just leave that to me. So we sat at a table, we ordered tea or something. We sat chatting for a little while and then I said to him, okay. Nobody was taking any notice of us. We were, we were sort of in an odd place. Everyone in that cafe was Chinese, everyone was busy minding their own business, eating their food, chatting with their families and so on and so forth. And we just sat in a quiet corner on little stools, by the way, and uh, four mica top tables. And uh, it was it was very clean. It was very small. And, and uh, you know, maybe a lot of people would think, oh, I'm not going in there. But it was it was great. It was a great place to go. So at some point I said to Mike, are you, are you ready? He said, okay, just tell me what to do. So I said, well, you've had healing before, you know, just I want you to just close your eyes, sit up as straight as you can, be a nice channel, feet on the ground. And I proceeded, I laid my hands on his shoulders and I proceeded to give him healing. 
and it is true you could hear the traffic you could hear the trucks you could hear all this stuff going on and um, at some point as with healing as with everyone who has healing at some point and remember he'd been having healing now for quite a while so he knew what to do uh, everything fell away the noise fell away everything fell away it was just Mike myself of course my spirit guy Grey Eagle and anyone in the spirit world who wanted to come and join us but it was just this comfortable place that when you have healing and you become used to it and you have it on a regular basis you you sort of become familiar with that place and it's it's almost as if it's a place of safety so I had my hands on his shoulders at some point I could feel him completely relax and sink into the healing and as a healer of course I was able to just block out all of that stuff uh, there was none of this oh I can't do it here because this is not conducive because healing and this is the point of this story here healing is beautiful any any place you go any place you give it is conducive to your healing energy if you know how to control it if you know how to use it it's brilliant and you know you don't have to sit in a dark room and you don't have to have music going it of course it's helpful if that's what you want to do it's helpful if you want to sit in a in a nice room with soft lighting and listen to the music of course it's nice and it helps to get you in that frame of mind my point the point that i'm trying to make here is that you actually don't need that our healing works any place you are so we were perhaps I'm going to say 15, 20 minutes or something like that. And Mike was now completely relaxed. His breathing was uh, just perfect. He was way into the healing. Everything around us was completely blocked out. As he told me afterwards, um, you know, he didn't hear a thing. Uh, he just put himself in that place, put himself in my hands and off we went. And I put myself in the hands of Grey Eagle. I put myself in the hands of God and that God force that is out there, that force for healing, that powerful universal God force that is out there. And off we went. We had a beautiful session. It was a wonderful, wonderful session. And as I said, we were in a corner, so a quiet corner of this busy, busy place. And um, eventually I finished and uh, I started rubbing Mike's shoulders to let him know, okay, you can, you, we're done, you can come around now, very, very gently bringing him back. And at some point in the process of doing this, I look up into the restaurant and of course the noise is back and all the rest of it. What was the most amazing thing was that every single person, and there were a lot of people, every single person in that restaurant was watching us. Many of them had got up and had come and gathered around us. Some of them were holding their hands out to us. Every single person in that restaurant knew what we were doing. And every single person in that restaurant was participating. You could hear a pin drop in that place. People were silent. People were in awe of what was going on. Many people could feel the energy. People wanted to participate in some way, but quietly. Not intruding, not forcing themselves, not pushing themselves, but simply going with the moment, you might say going with the flow, going with the flow of energy. And I looked up, as I said, and there were all these people, a big crowd around us. Not one of them made a sound, not one of them made a murmur. And I just smiled at them and I thanked them. I said, thank you. They knew what I was saying thank you for because they had participated, they were giving. They totally understood that something spiritual was happening here. They might not have understood the details. They might not have quite understood exactly what was going on. 
but they saw this lady or Western woman laying her hands on a Western man in, a, in an Oriental place and practicing the art of healing. And they knew, they just knew that something profound was going on. I as I said, I smiled at them. I quietly said thank you to them. Then I, Mike started to come around. He opened his eyes and all these people were just looking at him, staring at him. But he was in such a good place, in such a good, soft, <coughs> relaxed place. And he just smiled at them. And then he said thank you. And quietly... All of these people went and sat back in their, in their seats. Some of them had come from outside that looked into the restaurant and they'd seen us, this cafe, whatever you call it. They'd seen us and come in. The owner of the place obviously was happy with this too because nobody said a word to us, but they all quietly then went some back to their table, some went outside and I said to Mike, how, how are you feeling? And he said, I feel great. I feel absolutely great. And he said to me, you know, you're right. He said, there was no noise. He said, I went to a place where it was just warm and comfortable and beautiful. And I said, that's healing for you. And that's what we try to do. I thought you'd like that story because again, I have to say to you that healing works anywhere, in any situation. Of course, as healers, we like it to be by a cool stream, sitting, looking at a beautiful view. We'd like to have the perfect and what many people call the ideal situation. But healing is about creating that ideal place. Healing is about creating and allowing that ideal place because that ideal place is actually within us, within our soul. So that ideal place, we have it already. It's, it's ours if we just know how to tap into it, if we can just trust that whether we're on a train or a bus or in a crowded place or we're, we're sort of lining up to get on the ferry and everybody's pushing and shoving even then our perfect place is within us our perfect place for healing is within us and when i and we will be doing very shortly we'll be doing our healing session i want you to think about that i'd like you to think okay where is the best place that i can sit where is the best place that i can be within your soul is where you can be so just trust that your soul knows what it is that you want it reminds me that we had an email today from somebody who asked uh, um, do you follow your heart or do you follow your head it was a simple that was it nothing else rosemary do you follow your heart or do you follow your head and Michelle said to me, you know, it's a that's a that's a tricky one, he said, because she said, because what did you say, Michelle? Sometimes you, you follow, follow your heart. Yeah, mm. sometimes you follow your heart, sometimes you follow your head, you know, sometimes you use both because you've got to apply common sense even when you're feeling or when your heart is telling you something, you still have to apply common sense to any action that you're going to take. So I said to Michelle, Well, this is what I would say. I would say this is what I do before I listen to my heart or my head I listen to my soul I go within I feel I sense I become aware of my soul because my soul is going to tell me my soul is going to guide me my soul is going to guide me to what it is that I need to do and then after that once I've connected with my soul, my soul will tell me actually, you know, that my perhaps my heart is, it, I should listen more to my heart this time, but applying common sense again, listening to my head and so on. So when we are 
healing, giving healing. Many of you out there, I'm sure, are healers giving healing. And many of you are people who want healing. So when we give healing or when you start, whether it's with me as a healer or with anyone else as a healer, and when we begin our healing prayer, I'd like you to remember healing takes place not where you're sitting. Uh, healing takes place not where you're standing or where you're lying. Healing first and foremost takes place within. It takes place within you. And if you can find that place within you, every distraction can disappear. And as a healer, I've learned that over the years, the ideal place doesn't really exist except within you. Uh, all right, so um, let's now, I, do we have any comments or questions? We'll take one or two, but then I'd like to go into the healing session. And then it's a free for all and you can ask all of you whatever it is you'd like to ask. The only thing we've got is good mornings and the post I put up letting everybody know that they can email into the office for healing requests or questions. Good, good. And... good. all right then. So let's start with our healing session. And uh, so uh, I, I would, for, the, for, for our healing session, I always like to have people sitting, you know, as to make yourself as nice and as clear a channel sitting in a, you know, you can lie on a bed if you want. You can sit anywhere. We just discussed that, didn't we? You sit anywhere. But with my patients, if I'm coming into the healing centre and I have my patients, I'll say, or, or, or if they come into my home for healing, okay, I'll find them a nice, comfortable chair to sit in. Keep your back nice and straight uh, and um, feet on the ground. I'm always a feet on the ground kind of person. Have you gathered that by now? Feet on the ground and hands, palms upwards on your knees, on your lap in a receiving position. My students are so excited. We're starting, I'm teaching them how to do that and to check with their, with their chakras, with their chakra points and so on and so forth. And we're at the moment, this, you know, last week, they're starting to use their palm centers as all healers would. Uh, and yes, if you want to participate with us or if you want to, to participate in our uh, conferences uh, at some point next, in the early next year, just email us rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com. We'll let you know all about that. But my students are so excited. So if any of my students are actually listening right now, you understand one that I will say to you, hands, palms upwards in a receiving position. Relax, uh, close your eyes. Go inward if you can. If you don't know how to do it, it's really okay. But just try and relax, breathe in through your solar plexus, like so, and holding, holding, holding that breath and then slowly releasing it and visualize the energy just flowing through you, flowing down your arms and out through your palm centers or through your fingertips. Okay. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Dear God, please allow us to participate in the healing process. Allow, allow us to be part of that universal, that God force, that universal healing energy that is out there please allow us to tap into that energy to be a part of that energy and and allow us to allow the flow to allow that healing flow to go through us and to bring us healing to bring healing to our soul and to give us calm to give us peace and to allow our soul to flourish dear god as always we say this, I will to thy will. Deep breath, breathing in through your solar plexus and let's begin. All right, breathing in, eyes closed. You might find it helpful if you can visualize a soft blue blanket. I tell my patients, if you can visualize that soft blue blanket, thread it with pretty pink ribbons, green ribbons. Pink is the color of love. Green is the color of peace and harmony. Of course, healing is the universal color. 
visualize being wrapped in that blanket. Some people will actually go out and buy a blanket and do this. So whichever way you want to do it, visualize that blanket wrapped around you, holding you close, holding you tight, bringing you peace and bringing you comfort. Some of you might, yes, breathing in through your solar plexus and holding that breath and holding that breath. See if you can feel the energy that is going out to you, that God force that is going out to you, that is surrounding you with that love, with that healing force that is out there. And breathe it in. Breathe that force in through your solar plexus and visualize it sort of filling you up, filling your lungs, filling every single part of you. Letting go and allowing the flow down through your arms, out through your palm centers, through your fingertips. And relax. And now taking another breath and breathing in that God force that is out there. Some of you might find it easier to visualize a blue sky. Visualize lying under a blue sky with the summer sun warming your face. Perhaps you're lying on beautiful green lawn. Perhaps you're lying and uh, lying there with the sun on your face and feeling the energy and that God force that surrounds you. Visualize lying under a blue sky let that sky envelop you, let that sky fill you, let that whole scene fill you up and let the sun warm your face. That sun, that light is the light of God. Allow it to penetrate, allow it to fill you up. Be as selfish as you want to be, gobble it up, take as much of this energy that we're giving out as you possibly can, it's yours, take it. We give it freely. And breathing in again. Filling your lungs. Holding that breath. Holding that healing energy that you've just pulled into you. Holding it. Visualize it filling your entire physical being. Visualize it touching your soul. Visualize it bringing beauty and joy and energy to the aura that surrounds your soul, the spirit that surrounds your soul. And let it go. Allow that energy to flow through you, to every part of you. I'm going to give you another little exercise to do. <coughs> you, Some of you can do this in bed at night. Stay where you are. We're not finished with the healing. We're still giving healing. Think of doing this. You can do it now. You can do it anytime. You can do it in bed at night if you want. Start with your toes. Let's start with our toes. Beautiful toes, pretty little toes. Now, I do realise that some of you have got ugly feet. And my feet aren't so pretty either. We're not looking at the physical. We're looking at the spiritual. Pretty toes. What lovely toes you are. Pretty feet. Work your way up to the ankles. Thank your feet. Thank your toes. Because they do a really good job, don't they? They do a good job of supporting us. Slowly as you go along, complementing each part of you, remember that that healing energy, that blue, blue healing energy is permeating through your body. Visualize your toes are blue, your feet are blue, your ankles are blue. Work your way slowly up to your calves and to your knees. Blue, 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 blue energy filling up, filling up. Filling your body completely. Pretty knees, lovely knees, 
You are aching today, but I'm going to give you some love. So here we go. Take some love, take some beautiful energy and slowly work your way up and slowly working your way up your body. If you do this at night time, you'll be asleep in five minutes, I can guarantee it, because it's such a peaceful and a harmonious thing for us to do. Breathing in again, breathing in through your solar plexus, breathing in that beautiful universal God energy, that force, that healing force, that healing energy, which all of us, we have it within us, we have it within us to give, but we have it within us to receive. Again, remember what I said, the perfect place is within us. The perfect place for healing is within us. So let's try this again, breathing in through your solar plexus, drawing in that energy, visualize it filling you up, filling every single part of you, filling up every single part of your body. Let that healing energy flow through you. Let that love, let that joy, let that beauty touch every single part of you. Allow it to come into every pore of you, every part of you. Holding, 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 and slowly letting go, letting go, and allowing it to flow through you out down your arms all the way down your arms into your wrists and flowing out through your palm centers flowing out through your hands flowing out through your fingertips and deep breath and relax that's all healing is it's just love using energy Filling yourself with energy, filling yourself with that God force. And while I'm saying this to you, I know that I want you to sort of come around a little bit now. We're done with our healing. But whether or not you believe in God really doesn't matter because I believe for all of us. I have a, a profound trust and belief in that God force, in that God energy. And so whether or not you believe or whether or not you're unsure does not matter. Just gobble it up anyway. Let it work for you. Let it make you feel better. Let it give you healing. Let it work. First of all, let it work for your soul. Allow your soul to be healed. Allow the spirit, the aura of the soul to get brighter, bigger, beautiful, more beautiful, so that it flowers and grows and blooms and eventually blossoms. And all of that beautiful energy then will permeate through your body and hopefully will affect you physically, hopefully will give you some physical ease, some physical healing, you know I never promise that physically we can be healed, ever, but it happens all the time that people are affected, people are given healing, and healing does, can and does work on a physical level. But first we have to heal the soul, we have to give light and joy to the aura of the soul, which is our spirit, and we have to find joy in life. Okay, questions, questions, and do please understand that we're only going to go on this show for as long as the questions come in. So if you want the show to continue, get typing, stop participating, get on with it. If Michelle says to me, we don't have any questions, I shall say goodbye, because we've got things to do, don't we? Uh, but, uh, all right, so, I hope you love the story. Again, healing works wherever you are. Even if you're in a noisy factory or down a mine, you know, don't do don't do healing when you're working machinery, by the way. Don't do healing when you're driving a car because when you put yourself out and you start to relax, 
you better not be using any kind of machinery that is dangerous because you'll end up you know in trouble and I always put on my healing CDs on my meditation CDs there is a little note there if you read it on the back and it says please do not use this while uh, driving or working any machinery whatsoever you've got to be careful I mean I know I said you can give healing anywhere you like but be sensible about it please all right Michelle Wendy Hi, made a Wendy. comment and she said the this lesson came at the right time. I put off doing healing meditation until I've got everything perfect. No dishes in the sink, bed made, emails answered, and now I know differently. Thank you. <laughs> Good. And then she also Good. said, I can feel that moving energy. Thank you. My face is flushing. Good. I'm glad. Good, good, good. Yeah, everybody thinks it's true. Everybody thinks it has to be quiet. You have to have the music. You have to find that moment in the day. And it's so hard to find it, isn't it? Even though it only lasts a few minutes. Oh, it's like exercise, isn't it? I don't have time. Of course, if you want to do it, you'll make time. You'll find time. Wendy, leave the dishes alone. Go get yourself some healing. You'll be so rejuvenated when you come back to do those dishes. You'll be done in half the time it would normally take. Uh, of course, there is another way you can do that. You could always get a dishwasher too. <laughs> it's like, okay, keep going. Let's keep going. Is, it. is that it? Oh, Nettie's on. She just sent us a little thing. It says, one's physical healing only can occur when the soul is healed? Question mark. Yes. Yes. You know, you bring light and joy within you. And then healing takes place. I actually am going to correct that answer because actually that's not always true. Of course, if you've cut your finger or even if you cut your finger off, you don't necessarily have to have a pure soul in order for it to heal. The body heals in many different ways. But, but a deep healing, we're talking about a deep spiritual healing, uh, only, only occurs when we heal the soul. So it depends. Healing, you know, it's like if you've got a cold, uh, and flu, take 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 medicines, take whatever it is, and again, you don't need to have the soul in peak condition in order to get over a cold, do you? Uh, but um, when you do healing on a regular basis, if you give yourself healing on a regular basis, or you can actually listen to this every week, we we're doing this healing meditation every week. It's slightly different. I gave you the little exercise of going up your body, giving love to every single part of your body, thanking every part of your body for the job that it does. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, I, I think that helps to for us to understand that even though we feel ugly sometimes and even though we're not happy with, you know, maybe our hips are too big or our feet are too ugly or, or wish I had petite hands like you have, all this sort of thing. When you give healing to every little part of your body, especially if you, you do it at night time before you go to bed and you, you see beautiful toes, beautiful hands, beautiful lungs, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're thanking your body, you're giving to your body, you're giving joy to your physical self. Um, all of a sudden you realize there is not one part of you that you really should be disparaging because without our the use of our bodies and those of you who do not have certain parts of your bodies in use you will know this absolutely to say thank you to the, the good working parts of our physical body is always something I think we should do we don't do it people forget to do it but as we would thank a friend for bringing soup if we were sick you know I would thank my physical body thank goodness thank you thank you lungs for breathing better today thank you tummy for not getting upset today so if you do that exercise you start to realize just how beautiful the physical body is how complex and how interesting but how beautiful the physical body is and then you immediately start to feel better about yourself I had a student many years ago I will tell you she hated her legs this girl absolutely hated her legs she felt embarrassed by them she always used to wear either a pair of pants or a long skirt or something she was always covering up her legs because she really really hated them 
she thought they were fat and ugly so I gave her that exercise to do I said right every night before you go to bed or when you're in bed you can do it when you're in bed I want you to start at your toes she had such difficulty because she'd had she was well into she might have been 45 or something and she so she'd had 45 years of hating her body really hating her body and now what you're asking me to say thank you and to say beautiful body beautiful legs are you kidding me i can't do that she said but when she started to she started to feel more confident she started to feel better in herself she just started to build on her the pride in the fact that you know what i'm 45 years old and i'm doing pretty good and you know what maybe not everybody loves my legs but guess what I love the fact that they're still working, they're still carrying me about, so I'll say they're beautiful just simply for that and that alone. Comments, questions, I can see them popping up. Marcella said, Hi Marcella. Love you Rosemary, missing and talking to you. Um, Bye is getting a little more snow today. Wendy said, I think I think well I think Marcella's in Vermont so yeah um Wendy said that she lives in an RV that there's no dishwasher fitting in there <laughs> you do have a husband Wendy if I recall uh, <laughs> was that a very feminist thing to say I think it might have been don't shout at me for it I'm allowed my little foibles yes Dean said, hi, hi Rosemary has the right color for me to cover myself with blue. See, I'm wearing blue today. <laughs> um, Marisa said a heart. Hi, Marie, that's so nice of everyone. And Dean said he's having problems with the connection again. Oh, gosh. All right, you need to save it and get a new computer. I think it's us. Oh, yes, actually, <laughs> actually, Dean, uh, actually, everyone out there, yes. We discovered last week, and this has been going on for a long time, we discovered that my internet has been playing up. We had the guys out, we've had them out again, nobody can seem to figure it out. We are waiting for a new, whatever that router. is, uh, a what, a router? Modem. We're, yeah, we're, waiting router. For, we're waiting for a new router as we speak, it should be here hopefully tomorrow. But my internet cuts out, then it comes back up, then it cuts out, it comes back up. Michelle, you've had trouble with the computer. We've just not been, Michelle and I have just not been talking to each other about the internet services. Otherwise, we'd have realized much sooner that, uh, but it is frustrating. So it might yeah. be us, Dean. It just might well be us. Uh, okay, anyone else? We, we don't want to talk about computers. This is, a, this is about healing. We need to send some healing to our computers. Because we're having a rough time with that. Well, you know, I got the man out. <laughs> That's oh. what I did. I picked up the phone and got the man to come out. <laughs> Other than that, we're all caught up. We're all caught up? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, remember, please, all of you, I hope you like my story today. Nobody mentioned the story today. Not one of you has mentioned the story, uh, which is Because last week you had everybody in tears. Well, I'm not having you in tears this time i will give you the end of this story not that i want you to be in tears but mike eventually did uh pass um uh he i think uh was around for much much longer than the doctors thought he was going to be um even at the end he was using his healing finding peace finding joy finding harmony in that but eventually he did pass and uh, his, uh, his wife and his children, I think, benefited very much from, uh, and in fact told me that they benefited very much from the, the peace and the joy that he had found during our healing work. So, you know, healing is not about uh, making sure that nobody dies. Healing is about making sure that we give as much to our soul, we give as much joy and love and healing harmony to our soul that the the spirit the light of the soul can can grow and grow beautifully um so uh all right so now then you when can... you said your story was beautiful <laughs> thank you i think so uh and so now uh 
I think it, actually every healing story is a beautiful story because uh, it just it, it shows us and it teaches us uh, again as I've said that healing happens in the most unexpected ways and has uh, lots of different effects for different people if you want to know more about healing if you personally would like healing or you would like us to mention you as we're doing the show and send you specific healing in this moment please let us know email us rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com don't forget to put in the subject uh healing and then michelle knows exactly which folder to put it in and then she can help you faster quicker um also um if you want to know more about my my books if you want to know more about consultation if you want to know how to get on the mailing list because again i must say we will not put you on the mailing list and use unless you specifically request it and we've had so many requests for for, yeah. for healing i think people just automatically think that if you send us an email then automatically you will go on our mailing list we don't do that you have to request it and again in the subject line if it's you want to be on the mailing list put mailing list if you want healing put healing if you want a consultation please put consultation i had a wonderful con consultation yesterday with a lovely lady who lost her mum uh it was it was uh it was hard at first because uh um as soon as she saw, saw me she was crying and uh, she didn't know me, I'd not spoken to her before, but she, the tears were in her eyes and she was obviously extremely emotional just seeing me and just realising that there was a possibility that she was going to connect with her mum and she was going to connect with uh, her family. The funny thing was that her mother uh, was not going to let anybody else interfere with her first time with her daughter since she passed into the spirit world. So, but the, her mother did come to us and had lots to say and uh it was it was just really a, a real a real joy and it was a really joyful uh consultation uh why i'm telling you this i've no idea it's just because i just you know i have always worried a bit having a daughter i've always worried what will happen to my daughter when i'm gone so i always hoped and wished and prayed that she would have someone to love someone to focus on someone to concentrate on she wouldn't be alone when i passed and luckily we have my darling boy reese who is a very much um, uh, a special child and he and his mom have a beautiful relationship so as mothers we don't want to leave our children behind do we as parents who have lost their children the devastation is that we always wish don't we that you know we we have children and, and we expect that we're going to go before they do and very often that doesn't happen but you know life is strange for all of us healing works for all of those things healing can give us peace calm and such understanding of our own selves it can give us peace and calm and understanding of the fact that we are healers every one of us we all have the ability to heal and to give healing to and uh, you know there are many of you out there who listen it's always amazing to me because as soon as we end this show we go in and we see there might only be a half a dozen people uh, listening live but there are several hundred of <laughs> with, in. But who we you know who've uh, who've who've been watching one way or another so if you can't get to see this live if you are a person who is now watching this show and uh, and it's recorded please understand that the healing works anyway uh, follow the flow go with the flow uh, I will send you healing and, and specifically if you'd like to be on our healing list um, just please write to us and uh, you know we'll send healing to you every single day hands around the world all right that's it for now we are going i'm now going share 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 oh sorry sorry yes of course please if you enjoyed the show yes thank you please if you would specifically you know we like you to share whenever we whenever we do something we like you to click share so that you share with all of the people who are on your uh, um, facebook page and so on uh, but specifically and particularly with healing 
it is important that we share this knowledge with our friends, with our neighbours, with our families. And it is important if you don't think someone's going to much appreciate it, then let them decide that because you never know. Sometimes the person you think is the least interest, it, interested is the person who is shows the most interest or it might be the person who needs it most and is just in that moment when you share it very receptive to hearing this. I had a friend of mine write a letter uh, to me the other day. His wife had passed and uh, he, as he was clearing out the stuff, he came across my book he said he wrote I don't know how she got it well I know I gave it to her uh, I, I don't know how I got it but then he sort of in, in amongst all his clearing out uh, he just sat down uh, of course he knows me well he sat down and he read the book even though he knows me quite well he'd never read anything that I did he, and then he continued to tell us what the letter said and so on and he really had read it and it really it had really resonated with him and he got so much out of it um while his wife was alive uh, he never ever showed any interest in, in interest really he never disparaged it and he certainly never um you know said oh I don't, I don't believe in that stuff but whenever the conversation came around to what i did and his wife was very interested he was sort of you know sort of either start talking to somebody else at the dinner table or it's sort of you know sort of he wouldn't really participate and all of a sudden just when you think that you know someone and you think well i don't think that person would be interested they are because in that moment perhaps they need it so please when i ask you to share i'm asking you because it is important that we let people know that this is available to everyone and every single one of us is born with the gift to heal. And on that note, thank you very much for joining us. We don't have anybody else, do we? Thank you very much for joining us. And if you came in late and you want to ask a question, come earlier next week. Or, or email us. Or email us, write us an email, tell us what the question is, or tell us that your name if you want us to mention you specifically. Or And we never mention surnames, by the way. We never ever uh, discuss, uh, you know, of anybody's full name so wherever you are it's private here but please let us know through an email again rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com and we'll send you as much information as we possibly can and until i see you all again next week uh, uh some of you might see tomorrow because we are doing our um Still. the spirit world sees all on youtube tomorrow at 11 a.m eastern standard time I'm going to be with Al on Friday. Um, I'm not sure. We may have a guest. I'm not sure until I speak to Al. Uh, that will be for 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Uh, sorry, Friday afternoon. Uh, and so until I see you again, please, please, please have a very, very blessed rest of the day. And have a fabulous and a wonderful and joyful weekend. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. And now I've got to find that button, which is...